سمي العليم من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلاة وسلام على محمد وعلى أهل بيت الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين الأطهار لا سيما إمام الحجة المهدي أجل الله تعالى فرجه الشريف Dear brothers and sisters, respected viewers in the faith of Islam the ولاية of أمير المؤمنين عليه السلام Thank you for joining us for another episode of Treasures from Usul al-Kafi in which we examine some of the gems of the words of our holy and blessed Imams and the Messenger of God, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, found in Usul al-Kafi of Sheikh Muhammad al-Kulaini. In the previous episode, we discussed both the importance of al-Kafi as a text, in particular, one of the unique aspects of it being the inclusion of two books in the beginning concerned primarily with Usul al-Din, the doctrines of the faith. And we also discussed that one of the things that made this text unique is its inclusion in the beginning of a book dealing with the subject of aql, or a chapter, we might say. We discussed the role of aql and how it could be defined as our ability to discern and intuitively understand the narrations of our blessed imams and the instructions and sure knowledge, ilm, certainty, that we derive from their sayings. We discussed towards the end of the episode briefly the subject of ilm, or at least touched upon it, and inshallah in this episode and in some of the coming episodes we'll be dealing more in depth and diving into the sea of the words of the imams on what they mean by the word ilm, on its use, on scholars, their role in communities, and so on. In this episode, it's my pleasure to share with you and discuss one particular narration, which is one of the most important narrations that has reached us from our blessed imams. This narration is very famous. It's widely discussed, but perhaps not pondered over as much as it should be. It's reported in numerous of our texts and in a number of different variations. In this case, the narration reported from Al Sadiq alayhi salam in Usul al Kafi, he says that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, said, Seeking knowledge is obligatory upon every Muslim. Surely Allah loves the search for knowledge. This narration is extremely, extremely important. And one thing that I'll ask of our viewers is that we ponder over the way in which we apply this narration in our lives. Variations of this narration exist, as I mentioned, some explicitly stating that it's obligatory upon every Muslim, male and female, or the requirement to seek knowledge even if it is in China. However, we have to ask ourselves, what is the interpretation of this tradition, and what do we mean when we discuss ilm? With any subject, in particular, uh, any subject dealing with the hadith or narrations of the holy infallibles, we find that in the study of language and its use, that we can approach narrations from a variety of standpoints. In particular, even one word may have a restricted or unrestricted meaning or a specific or a more general meaning. We can also look at this narration in the same light. Ilm may have a number of meanings depending on whether we look at it from a restricted or unrestricted point of view. In the unrestricted sense, when we say that ilm is any kind of knowledge that we require to function in our daily lives or to improve ourselves or our societies, and we can talk about various kinds of knowledge that we need in order for us to function and exist as societies, whether this is knowledge of science or medicine and uh, hard sciences, we might say, like mathematics or chemistry, or whether this knowledge applies to other things such as the social sciences or even construction or other things that are required in order for us to continue to function and exist and progress and move forward. We have to ask ourselves, what is the significance of ilm in our daily lives? And also, what are the ways in which we use the knowledge that we gain and receive, and how much are we really struggling to gain this knowledge? We mentioned in one of the earlier narrations about the aql in the previous episode that we learn to associate aql with light and jahl, ignorance, with darkness. And this is very much the same with ilm. We may find that we can choose in our lives to follow the path of knowledge and of aql or the path of jahl and of ignorance, and that not all types of knowledge are equal. 
Some types of knowledge may be used for good or for bad. If we look at the knowledge of various sciences, for instance, we find that they can be used to uplift humanity, to better ourselves, such as sciences like medicine in particular, or surgery. And we see in the news every day new medical advances that are coming as a result of man's pursuit of knowledge. And that this pursuit of knowledge is something that's been instilled in us as part of our nature on an instinctual level by our Creator, Allah Azza By the same token, not all knowledge may be used for good. And we find also that humanity may apply its knowledge for other paths, such as weapons manufacturing or tools of mass destruction, rather than things that will help advance society. One of the ways that we judge societies of the past, in fact, is based on their pursuit of knowledge and the contributions that they've made in this area. Whether these are in areas of sciences and astronomy, or whether in the areas of medicine, or simply preservation of knowledge. In fact, we may marvel at some of the libraries of history, such as the Library of Alexandria or others. So we have to ask ourselves how much we follow this narration. Do we pursue knowledge, and do we pursue knowledge that is useful? Moreover, do we put that knowledge to good use in a way that will better not just ourselves, but the society around us? Even if we learn things from simple observation around us, such as we have problems in our communities, whether it's dealing with homelessness or substance abuse or other problems like this, how much are we contributing to improving these? Ultimately, we must ask ourselves the question, how much do we really take to heart the message of the Imams when they tell us, and the Prophet, moreover, when he tells us that seeking knowledge is obligatory upon every Muslim? Do we seek that knowledge, and do we apply it? We must wonder how much better our world would be if everyone, not just Muslims, applied just this one narration. Now, we've looked at this from the perspective of the general and unrestricted meaning of the word knowledge. Inshallah, in the following episodes, we will look at the more restricted sense of this word and how this applies in our pursuit of religious knowledge, which is, of course, the exclusive knowledge that we gain from the narrations of Ahl al-Bayt, peace be upon them all. Thank you for joining us for another episode. Inshallah, we will continue in future ones. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.